In this short tutorial, I will be stepping you through how to access the uh, Collaborate Ultra Tutorials online space, which is available through the Blackboard, which we have for each subject area. And I'm currently logged in already. As you can see, my name is in the top right hand corner. And up the top here, we have access to the uh, top level menu to allow enable us to navigate around the Blackboard spaces. On the left hand side, we can see the units uh, that you should be involved in this semester and we're looking particularly today at connected learning. Now, when we open uh, the connected learning uh, Blackboard space, your page will look slightly different to mine because I'm logged in as staff rather than as a student. However, along, most of it will be fairly similar. You'll be on this front page and in order to navigate to the Collaborate Ultra space, you need to go to the Tools option in the left-hand menu. Now, sometimes you might notice that the menu isn't there. It might look like this. Uh, there's no need to panic. It's just this little tiny tab here on the side that you click on, which will show bring up the menu again for you to access. So if we go to the Tools menu, we can see all of the different tools that are accessible for students. And one of them is, of course, Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, which is where the web conferencing sessions, which is our tutorials, will run. And it's also the space where you'll be able to view and download the recordings of the tutorials after the fact. Now, this is all done automatically in the system. And so after our tutorial on each Monday evening, the uh, recording will be processed automatically and automatically uploaded during the evening. Hopefully it will be available the following the next day, Tuesday morning. Uh, if it's not there in the morning, check back in the afternoon and it should definitely be there by then. So we will click on the Blackboard Collaborate Ultra link and that will open up that space for us. And you can see that I've set up each of the sessions for the semester, each of the tutorials on the Monday evenings. And when the semester is in progress, you'll simply go to this page and click on the relevant link. Now, while the semester hasn't started and all throughout the semester, you will also have access to the course room which is unlocked all of the time. Now, this is a great space for you to jump into to practice, uh, getting familiar with all of the different tools within Collaborate Ultra if you haven't used it before. It's also really handy to know about because you can use it as a web conferencing tool for you to meet with uh, other participants in connected learning if you want to get together to discuss the assessment or resources or anything like that. Um, and rather than using Zoom or another tool, you can just jump into the open course room. But this is only available to the participants of Connected Learning this semester. Now, in order to access that, just go over here to this little circle with the dots and you can click Join Course Room. It will take a little while to load. Um, this is also a tip for the evenings and when the tutorials are on because the load in the evenings is quite heavy. Lots of tutorials are happening at the same time. And so it's a good practice to get in at least 10 minutes before the tutorial is meant to start, just to open up the room and make sure that your connections are all stable. Um, the first week tutorial, I will open up the room half an hour early, but the rest, they'll be open up 15 minutes early. So you don't actually have to be sitting in front of the computer, just click into it and let it load in the background while you're doing other things. And then when 7.30 rolls around and it's time for the tutorial, hopefully you'll be ready to go. Now it loaded quite quickly that time for me because this is the second time that I've jumped into it this afternoon, but the first time it did take quite a while. So just be patient, nothing is hopefully going wrong. It just does take a little while. Now you can see at the moment, I'm the only one in the room. The room is empty uh, because uh, I'm logged in. I've got my little photo down the bottom and I can click on this to see the settings and uh, give a little bit of have a little bit of tool a few tools there to communicate things. This is also how I can leave the session when I'm finished. Now I am listed as the moderator and so I'm going to have a few extra tools from what uh, you have accessible to you but at the most of them will stay the same. You can see here that this is where I can mute myself or click to share audio. Mostly during tutorials 
Um, I'd ask everyone to stay muted until they wish to share something. I don't want you to be muted all the way through. I would love to hear and have conversations rather than just me monologuing. But if everyone has their audio turned on at the same time, it can get very, very noisy with a lot of feedback and background sounds. So it's good practice to have that off unless you are actually ready to speak. We also have the uh, opportunity to turn on our video. Now, um, the video will, um, I'm just, I have the video closed at the moment. You can see here, hello, there I am. I'll just shut that back down. Uh, of course, you don't have to have your video turned on, but it is really nice to see everyone's faces now and again. Obviously, this depends on broadband width um, and connectivity. Some nights, if there's lots of tutorials happening at the same time, it's better for us to have the video turned off. But obviously, um, it's always nicer to see happy smiley faces than just a black screen. We also have the opportunity to uh, raise our hand. So that little um, icon down there shows that my hand is raised. I wish to contribute. Something is kind of handy if someone's in the middle of a big spiel and you just want to indicate that you've got something also to share. Now you'll see there's a little purple tab over here and uh, this is where I can access the chat. So during the tutorial, there also is a chat that can run at the same time, a text chat. So here I just type in what I want to say. I can add the little icon, you know, and just like a, um, just like a chat in most, um, most applications. Um, this is also handy if you have a great idea that you want to share, but you don't need to want to interrupt the person who's speaking at the time or if you want to share a link rather than trying to read it out um, over, over, the, um, over the top of, um, of the um, verbally. That's not so helpful. Here I can see the attendees. At the moment, it's just me. This is where I can share content. Now, some of this may not be applicable to you or may not be accessible to you as students, but if, you're, uh, if you see this button, this is where you can upload a file if you wish to share something that you're working on with everyone else. And here are the audio and video settings. So very useful at the very beginning when you're trying to set up for the uh, tutorial. Uh, and you can see there how I've got all the settings. Um, and notification settings is also really important. It's really good to have audio notification unticked because if you have audio notification ticked and everyone does uh, and the sound is turned on, you can hear this ding, 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 ding constantly going on in the background, it can get quite distracting. So a visual notification is quite useful, but the audio notification can be quite distracting. Sometimes as the moderator, I may leave the audio notification on if someone raises their hand, simply because uh, I can get carried away and distracted and not notice uh, the silent raising the little button down the bottom. Um, but uh, generally speaking, audio notification is, unless you need it uh, for, for particular reasons, it's, it's easier just to have that turned off. So that's that little tab there. And then over here, we have another little tab, and this is the session menu. Now, this has got a few options which are quite in, um, you know, useful. One is Blackboard Collaborate Help, which is obviously really, really important uh, if you're getting stuck or so with something. Uh, but remember also QUT Help Desk is there to support you with any issues. And if you're having an issue, it's likely others are also having the issue. So don't panic. We can always resolve things. We can we always make recordings of tutorials so that you can catch up if for some techni technical reason you miss out. Um, so the important thing is don't stress if you're having issues. The other interesting and useful one is start recording. Now we're going to, I've set it to automatically record all of our tutorials, but if you're having a meeting and you want to record that meeting to come back to it at a later date, it's obviously a very handy one for you to have in this open uh, meeting room space. But just make sure that all of the participants are aware of and happy that the uh, session is being recorded. So that's basically all of the main controls. So I just click leave session. It always runs through asking you how the audio and video was during your session. It's good to give them some feedback there because that's how they're going to improve the tool. And then the session just closes down and you can close your window. And so that's a very brief overview of navigating to 
uh, Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. If you have any other issues, please check the OpenCL website where there's more information and check the Blackboard Ultra help site and also remember the QUT help desk is there as well. Thanks very much.